Hello everyone and welcome to our course, Introduction to Catechesis. My name is Francis Ferraro and I'm very excited to be your facilitator. You can read my bio under the Facilitator tab and to sort of get an idea of my background and experience. And of course, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. So before we get started um, in the course, I wanted to offer you just a brief introduction and let you know what we're going to be looking at um, together during our time. Okay, so we're going to start really at the very beginning. Uh, during the Vatican II Council, which was from 1962 to 1965, one of the major efforts was focused on a spiritual renewal. Renewal, excuse me. Uh, this had an impact on all areas of the church, and most specifically on religious education and catechesis. So from the close of that council in 1965 through our present time, there have been various documents published to guide both the content and the process of catechesis, both by Rome and also by the bishops in the United States. During our time together, we're going to be looking a little bit more closely um, at those documents and um, Whichever one that we speak on, whether it's the National Directory of Catechesis, the General Directory of Catechesis, or the Catechism of the Catholic Church, they all agree on, on one thing. Um, it's, and it, it is this. It's that the, in quotes, air quotes, the definitive aim of catechesis is to put people not only in touch, but in union and intimacy with Jesus Christ, right? So uh, what exactly does that mean, and what does that look like? As we know, catechesis takes place in our churches, it takes place through our religious education program, and of course it also takes place at home. So whether you're a paid parish staff worker like me, or you're a volunteer, what I used to do, uh, a family member, etc., we're all called in this same way to put those uh, not only in touch, but in union and intimacy with Jesus Christ, right? So it sounds like a really tall order. And what this statement is really getting at, once you deconstruct it and sort of reverse engineer it, is that uh, we're all tasked with helping our students, our parishioners, our families to come to know Jesus through, um, through education. So I would call that like head knowledge, right? And also to come and to recognize Jesus, which most of us already do as our Lord and Savior, as our destination at the end of our earthly life, but also more importantly, to come to know him as, as our friend and as our companion along the way. And that's really what I mean by um, heart knowledge. So to that end, um, uh, the course is going to be focusing a lot more on the process and methods uh, rather than the content, because the content, as you know, is driven by whatever publisher that you're using. There's Benzinger, Loyola Press, Our Sunday Visitor, certainly where there's no shortage of um, uh, publishers in the religious education field, right? So as we know, when we approach each of our religious education classes, they're all different. Even if you're teaching sixth grade year after year after year, every new group of kids that you get, they're, they're all different. They have different needs, there's different styles of learning, they're at different levels of ability, and when we're putting together classes for everyone, uh, we have to uh, consider that and we have to addre address those issues. So um, now that I've given you a little bit of a, um, a sneak preview, as it were, I'm going to focus a little bit now on housekeeping. So one of the things that you'll learn in my, um, my bio under, under the facilitator tab is that I received my Master of Arts in Religious and Religious Education entirely online. And I've also participated in numerous um, VLCFF online courses. And certainly while I very much enjoy learning online, to be sure, online learning can present some issues. So to that end, there are a few tips that I'd like to pass along to you and that I really recommend that you, what, that you use. So um, as of right now, most of us are probably working from home anyway in one form or another due to quarantine. So um, one thing I will tell you is that it's very important to stay organized, okay? So I suggest that you try and keep your downloads and things like that organized by session. So in the past, I've always used a three-ring binder with divider tabs inserted to help me stay organized and to keep my material together. And let's face it, that's always a challenge. Second, at the beginning of each session, there's going to be a weekly study chart. It looks like this, okay? So um, I really recommend, I highly recommend that you download it and you print it out at the beginning of each session. And then be sure to check off the material as you complete it. You see how I have those little check marks there? So this way, all you have to do is take a quick glance at that and then um, 
you'll already know what's been submitted and also still importantly what you still need to be submitted okay and after the first week of our time together just to give everybody a chance to begin um, I'm not going to be contacting you if you didn't um, submit something so I, in other words I won't be running after you in that way so I really do need you to stay current okay so to that end I also understand that life happens along the way uh, there are personal things that we may have to take care of maybe there's internet issues whatever it is okay so if you require an extension because of personal circumstances then I'm asking you to please reach out to me via the VLCFF email and I will make a note in my records and of course I will happily grant you that uh, extension so please understand that I can only grant you ex an extension if I hear from you right that makes sense okay so in the meantime I am looking forward to our time together and as Jesus tells us come and see take good care and I'll be in touch again soon bye bye <music>